Lumos v2.2 is live, and in this video we'll cover the latest updates. Webflow recently released the number prop, and this powers a lot of the latest version of Lumos. We can set our column count here for the large screen size. On our medium screen size, we might want it to also be two columns. If we set it to zero, it can inherit from the previous screen size. So we'll do that here. And then on our small screen size, we'll switch it to a one column grid. Now this is set to the default variant, so it's looking at the width of the entire container to know when to wrap. We could set it to the self-contained variant and then it'll look at its own width. And all that's doing is on that variant, we're setting the container type inline size to that parent div. This is what we normally apply to our container class so that it looks at the width of this grid. Since this grid is just as wide as our small screen, it's gonna show the small screen version here. And notice how even our padding on the cards is changing to be what it would be on that small screen. So we'll cover how that works in just a bit. And then once our layout wraps here and it's as wide as the container, it's as wide as our medium screen. So that's what we're using here. And so we can control that. That's how the self-contained variant works. Now with the auto fit variant, I'll go ahead and put this in the section. We can go ahead and set the maximum column count. So never have more than three columns or four or whatever size we'd like. And then we can set the minimum size of those columns. So never let the columns get smaller than 19 rim, for instance. So in this case, they've already wrapped, but on a larger screen size, they might still be three cards side by side. And we'll notice that if we switch this over to the auto fill variant, then we have this empty space. It's filling in the grid with empty space, depending on our minimum uh, column size and how many cards it can fit. Whereas with the auto fit variant, it's gonna stretch them out um, to fit within the entire grid. And the medium and small screen sizes don't really do anything on this auto fit and auto fill variants here. Now with the component props, we can set what the max and min value should be for each prop. So for the large screen size, we're never letting it get smaller than one, max of 12. The decimals here, we usually want zero, so no decimal points at all. And then the default number for that. And then for the medium screen size, we let it go all the way down to zero so it can inherit from the previous screen size if needed. Now this number prop is also used on this paragraph element here in any of our text components. So we can dial in exactly what we want the max width to be. A max width that looks great for one piece of text might look terrible for another. So it's really important to have that flexibility to dial that in when the copy changes. And we'll notice that if we go ahead and set the max width to negative one, that will be no max width at all. So we can completely remove it. If I hold the shift key, it'll increment by 10 digits like so. And if we take a look at this, we can use that since it's just a number variable, we can use it however we'd like. So I'm taking it that number, if it's 44 multiplied by one CH is gonna be 44 CH, but we can use it as a rim unit. We could use it as a percent if we want to set the width of an element from zero to 100% or however we want to use that unit. Now, I also have this overlay element here and we can dial in the strength of the overlay depending on the brightness of the image underneath. And that value is gonna be different across variants. So here the top of it, notice how dark it is. And then if we go to the gradient variant, uh, full strength is a little bit lighter on that gradient variant. So if we open up this component, we'll notice that we're just taking the um, number here divided by 100. So if this is 50 divided by 100, that would be 0.5 and then multiplied by 60. So that'll give us half of whatever this value is. Um, so this is where we can set our max value. So it's 60% darkness is the max on that variant. Whereas on this other variant, 80% is the max. And we can also use a uh, clamp if we wanna set a max and a min value. So there's all kinds of ways we can use this. Now, practically how this works is we have a data number attribute and we connect its value to the component prop. So whenever the value is 40, we set a number variable to also be 40 and we're supporting numbers in negative one through 100. We can multiply that number by any unit we want, use it however we want in the style panel. The CSS is less than three kilobytes and it makes things so much easier for the client to maintain through that number prop. And we will notice we also have when the value is set to negative one, we set the number variable back to its initial value, which was nothing. That's important because without this, if it was set to negative one, it could inherit from any parents that are also using that number uh, attribute in different ways. So it's important that we have this uh, negative one uh, initial if we want to set the value to nothing without inheriting from a parent. 
And when it's time to apply that, we just connect that data number attribute to whatever component prop we plan to use with whatever default values, min and max that we want. Notice how when we set the gap on the parent grid, the child grid also inherits that gap unless we override the child's gap. This is helpful in places where we're nesting grids and we want the child grid to inherit the parent gap. This works because our gap uh, is set to a dynamic variable here and its value changes depending on this variable mode. This is important for our auto fit and auto fill grids to work correctly, but it has the added benefit of that when we apply a gap to any kind of parent grid, even if it's not a direct parent, the child will receive the value of that variable until we override it. With the new responsive system in Lumos, we can adjust the size of anything across a couple key screen sizes without having to use Webflow breakpoints so that our site is completely accessible and has the added benefit of allowing us to enable container queries whenever we want so that an element responds to the space it actually has, meaning it can have more padding here, but when there's less space available, it can automatically adjust to its context. Previously, to do something like this, we'd had to write a lot of custom code, but the new responsive collection in Lumos makes this so much easier. So here we have a large, medium, small, and extra small variable. On our large mode, only the large variable set and everything else is zero. For the medium mode, only that medium variable set to one, everything else is zero, and that just continues all the way down. In most cases, it's fine to just attach a single fluid size to an element, but there are some cases where maybe the layout changes and we need to add or remove or adjust sizes across our different screen sizes. So to do that, we can head to this card, for instance, and I'll go ahead and open up its padding. And I'm applying my space seven variable here to the large and medium screen size. I'm applying space five to the small and extra small screen size, but I can combine this in any way I want. So I might go ahead and apply space seven to the large, medium, and small screen size, and space five only goes on the extra small screen size. Or I can give each screen size a unique value. So I can go ahead and set space six here on the medium screen size, and I'll go ahead and set something like space five here on the small screen size, and let's go with space four on the extra small screen size. And once we start to apply this, we can use that same thing for gaps and anything else we want to set here. And it's gonna be connected to the same sort of responsive system for our grids and any other layouts on our site. In the latest version of Lumos, most components don't have classes on by default. So things like the image, the heading are completely clear of classes. In previous versions, if we drop in an image, it would automatically have an aspect ratio and a background color class and text elements would have some margin bottom. They would need this class of you child contain if we want to contain the child and max width. And that starts to add up the number of classes we're using on an element. So instead here, the image uh, component here will notice just has a default aspect ratio. It has a default sort of background color applied, and we can always override that on a per element basis if we ever need to add a class, but that class doesn't have to be on by default. So if we're using a PNG image, we can give our uh, background color transparent here. If we want to remove the bottom margin or change it to a different bottom margin, we can override that there. And our text elements have the same default styles uh, that you child can would normally have. So it has that, it has the default bottom margin. And if we want to override that, we can give it a min width of auto. And that way it doesn't have those you child contain styles if we want it to contain the parent instead. Um, but we don't have to have as many classes on elements. And the newest version also makes heavy use uh, variants. So previously, if we had sort of an aspect ratio on this image here and we were to want to use it as a background image, we would need to make sure to remove that aspect ratio so it doesn't overflow and then give it a class like cover absolute. But instead with this latest version, we can just switch it to the cover variant. And even if we forget to remove the aspect ratio, it's fine because it unsets the aspect ratio and makes sure it can override the utility on this variant and gives it all the correct styles we want when an image should cover the space it's in. So we can just easily switch the variant for this button here. Instead of having to drop in a separate text link component, we can just switch over to our text link style like so. This is made possible by Lumos's new uh, trigger and state manager. So we can easily switch the trigger states of elements across variants. 
um, without having to create separate components for every little thing, which really speeds up the workflow. We can really see the state manager in action here where we can have unique states for each of these different variants here. We can style exactly how they should look without having to write a bunch of custom code. So if I were to go into the component, we'll notice for this button variant here, I've gone ahead and set the base color to have a transparent background color. And then when we go ahead and check it, I've gone ahead and set it to have a dark background color on check. Now the border color here will be a transparent color by default. And then whenever we check it, the border color will change to this solid color here. And that can change across each of the different variants. So here on this toggle element, I can go ahead and have this, the background on this little element here instead of on the entire parent. And that can be faded by default. And then when it's checked, it can change to a solid color, or I could easily just switch it over to the brand color when checked without having to dig into any kind of custom code and find where those values were set. All of the interactive components got some big upgrades as well. A big part of what makes Lumo so special is the community behind it and all of the feedback that you send in. One feedback that came through quite a lot is we can have cards inside of the slider slot or we can have a collection list, but sometimes when we're inside a closed component like this, we actually want to nest another slot instead. That way we can go outside of the component and add the cards from there. Previously, this wasn't possible. Notice how it's not even quite looking right. But with the new update here, all we have to do is give that slot a class of display contents and the JavaScript will know to remove this element grab the cards inside it and add them directly within the original slot. So now everything looks fine here and we can nest the slots up to two times. So we can have two slots inside before we get to the actual card or collection list. And that works for the accordions and the tab components as well. The Lumos Docs is also getting a major upgrade. Caleb Brainy is writing the latest version of the Docs. He's an excellent writer and so great at taking technical things and making them feel simple. He was maintaining his own version of the Lumos Docs for his clients, and he has graciously agreed to write the latest versions. He's already created a client guide for clients to understand how to use Lumos, getting started, and filling in a lot of these details. Now, the Lumos Docs have been completely moved to Notion, so whenever you start a project, you can duplicate the Lumos docs and then start filling in any custom classes, variables, or components you add for your client, add them to your own custom docs that you can give your client later. So if another developer comes on years down the road, they can understand what you add it, where it is, and there's completely custom documentation for your project. These docs, because they're a notion, also have a great search system. So if I want to find out what the U alignment class does, I can just search that and it goes straight to the page explaining what that class is and a pretty great database as well. So if I go into components, I can see down here at the bottom a list of all the different components we have. And if I want to go into maybe the grid component here and open that up, I can read about what each of the different properties do and how to use that component from here. There's also in the Lumos docs, each version now is going to have its own um, sort of docs. So if I go into the change log going forward, Forward, any new versions have their own docs. So I can uh, go here to V2.1, open it up and see what was changed. And I can go to the docs for that version here. And you'll also notice that the way version numbers handled is being changed. So previously, Lumos only documented major changes. And there were a lot of minor changes in between that didn't really get documented. So going forward, uh, the big number here will be for any big changes. So the next big version would be 2.3, but there could be lots of little changes in between. So we could have a 2.2.13 if there's 13 little changes before the next major version. So um, the major versions will really dictate uh, when that middle number switches over. And it's basically when a big change happens. So like Webflow introduced the number component prop, Webflow releases a uh, custom component component labels, tool tips, prioritizes search. Um, other big updates was Webflow allowed CSS functions in the variable panel or when they released native variable modes. So usually big updates like that is what triggers a whole new version. Um, but smaller updates will be things like community feedback on interactive components.
components, variants, and little things like that. Lastly, under class naming and then all utility classes and attributes, we can see a list of every class and every data attribute used in Lumos. We can filter by the different types and we can open it up to learn more about what that class or attribute does. And of course we can search through this as well. So this is an overview of the major updates within V2.2, but be sure to go through the docs in Clonable to discover everything this latest version has to offer.